Welcome back to the podcast that rocks. Weekly podcast that talks about news in the world of rock, metal, alternative, and everything in between. With me again is Go Gretchen. Say hello, Gretchen. Hello, Gretchen. There you go. Uh huh. Hopefully you all are doing well out there. I see both chat rooms filling up right now. Thank you for all for tuning in live on YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Thank you guys also for following all the different socials and like getting the updates on this stuff too. It helps out a ton. As many of you are filling in, and I also want to personally thank everyone who ch- checked out New Music Night this past Sunday. It was a good one, I think. We had the most people in so far. The more people we get, the better, too. We'll be doing this every Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern, in case you're interested. And I'll have more announcements for upcoming live stuff at the end of the podcast, along with other things, too. Hopefully you're all doing well. Gretchen, how are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. It got to about 72 degrees here in Virginia, so um, it was really nice uh, to have a taste of spring, even though I have a feeling it's short-lived. <laughs> I miss winter. No. Oh, give me 70 degree weather. I'm so yeah. ready for. Like... What, do you, what do you mean? No. Yes, I do miss winter, Gretchen. No, no, you're not allowed to. I, I do. No, it's time for spring. It's time for warmth. Ugh. Let's go. Barf. Well, however, thank you all very much as you hear us talk about what our favorite seasons are. So <laughs> Gretchen's always cold. I'm always warm. I am. So. I'm freezing. It's 72 in my house right now, and I'm freezing. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. Wow, thanks. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> Someone on Twitch, I dislike all the seasons. <laughs> oh, well, I don't, know I, what mean, to, I don't know what to tell you, pal. <laughs> I mean, all seasons, you know, have their pros and cons, so. Boy. As we settle in here for what's been going on in the past week, something um, not so much broke, but there's been two very interesting takes. That's a good way to say it from two key figures in the rock world right now. Very different from each other, too. Not even relating to. Um, For the first one, it really is breaking down about the title of the episode. Sully Erna is fed up with the COVID inflation slash conspiracy and he's moving to florida to get away from all the people who disagree with him in the northeast and he thinks covid numbers are inflated he thinks Mm. it's not that big of a deal and he wants to live in a more remote area where people agree with him and mask laws are more laxed i am making none of that up Mm. so to uh, paraphrase, let me pull up the actual some two of the quotes, and these are bigger quotes. But I'm gonna do my best to summarize as much as I can because he gave a full breakdown on a podcast he was doing this past at the end of last week. Should I do it? No, I'm not gonna do it in the Sully Erna voice. It's too long. It's a long yeah. story, but in a nutshell, I'd be looking at an alternate alternate home for a while now. And California was kind of on my radar just because I have a lot of friends there, businesses there, and I love weather. But when all this political stuff went down, it really turned me off to just the thought and process ways of being for a lot of the liberals and people that I just can't connect with on but that wavelength. So it kind of bummed me out to a point where I'm like, well, I don't really want to go 3,000 miles across the country to pay triple the amount of money to live in that kind of nonsense and be locked down. So yeah, Corona and politics played a piece of my decision to divert to Florida. And I honestly just went down there to buy a property with a little bit of room and a decent little house. And I wanted horses. And I knew that Shannon, the drummer from Godsmack, was kind of in the horse country because it's in North Myers, North Fort Myers, Florida, about two hours south of Tampa, roughly. Hmm. So I just came across this really great deal with a lady who had a 20-acre horse ranch, but she also owned a 30-acre pasture next door to it, which is just an open pasture that some guy leases to pasteurize his cows on. And it gives me a tax break because it's agricultural, and I get half a cow a year. So yeah, I'm a meat eater too. Not only am I not a liberal, I'm a meat eater. And that's how he ends the quote. So... Oh, I didn't even, I didn't know that quote existed, so, like, I'm processing a lot right now. This all broke on the Mrs. K- Mistress Carrie podcast last week, uh, March 5th, after the last week's podcast, obviously. Um, so, number one, he is, he refuses to live around liberals anymore. I just flat out refuses. Two, How he, open-minded. Two, he's very fed up with all the masks and COVID stuff. 
He would make other quotes later in the week talking about how COVID numbers are absolutely inflated just to do that. And his biggest one, let me see if I can find this. Because this is the big one that really was, ugh, uh, this is the sick one. I'm a Republican. I want Republican. I don't necessarily want Bush to win back in 2004. I don't like that choice, but I got to tell you, I truly don't believe in Democrats either. See, that was in 2004. Fast forward to 2021. If Trump stays in office, COVID's going to be a big, messy pain, and there's going to be more people burning down Wendy's restaurants. If Trump is gone, all of a sudden they're going to have this miracle vaccine that those liars have been holding on to. That was a few months back. So um, he was blaming also the civil rights uh, protest and the racist marches mm -hmm. on pretty much if Trump stayed in office, he's blaming the liberals and people protesting. And he said that since Trump is gone, the reason is the reason why we have a vaccine that we would have had anyway, because they said they were just holding it out until Trump's gone to make Trump look bad. No, Trump, Trump made himself look bad on his own. But... Well, okay. he's not a liberal. So <clears throat> according to Sully Erna, he's okay. Another reason why, and I do want to give credit, that's where the rest of his band lives is in Florida. Oh, so where did he live? Up northeast, it's... New Hampshire area, Boston, oh, oh, Massachusetts okay. area, where he's originally from. And the reason, though, is like one, the biggest reason he says he just can't get away from all the liberals and the progressive thinking and the, you know, all that. So, And then the COVID <laughs> stuff really plays a big part of it, too. He says... One of the biggest reasons why he wants to live there is because they have more lax COVID-19 restrictions. And they do. Florida's bad about that. Florida's terrible. So he was normally pretty not tame, but he just never really spoke about politics that much. As more and more time went on, especially since Trump took office, he started going more and more to Aaron Lewis's side, if that makes sense. Say. They had that little tour together. They did. And now he's just pretty much doesn't care anymore. He wants to move to Florida. Sorry, Florida. And by the way, he's moving to Nowheresville, Florida. Not <laughs> big city, Florida. North Fort Myers is not big. And that's, again, it's like farm country. It's mm -hmm. closer to the Everglades and the true swamplands of Florida. <laughs> so, yeah. Biggest, oh. the closest big city next to him, that next to him would be Tampa, like about roughly two mm -hmm. hours north. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's way down there. I don't know why. Besides all that, I mean, he knows Florida, yeah. and you think like, oh, those are going to be my people. No, that's mostly old people and farmers and not much else. Really, not much else. And I get it if he wants to be isolated. I mean, he is the king of um, introverted music. Stay away, keep away, go away. I mean, this <laughs> that makes sense then if he wants to move there. Yeah, no joke. But, ugh, <laughs> on Twitch, I, on behalf of all Massachusetts-born Americans, apologize for Sully Erna. Not your fault. <laughs> Not your fault. On YouTube, I'm from New Hampshire, so he can keep away. Well said. Uh, also does he know anything about horses he's like i want to get into horses that was the like, last thing the first like when he talks he says he wanted to have some horses and then he says well now i get a tax cut for it i'm like Ugh. so you're just gonna have someone who go ahead like grew as someone who grew up with horses like bruh you can't just be like i want a horse yeah and i got a feeling they're gonna have he's just gonna pay other people to take care of him so he has extremely expensive living lawn ornaments is what they'll yeah. be. And that's it. And then the whole thing, like he's not right next door to a cattle ranch or like a cow ranch too. And it's like, yeah. well, I get half a cow a year now too. All that meat. That's right. I'm a meat eater. Suck it, libs. I'm like, what are you talking about? That, Who are you talking gross, to? <laughs> I was going to say, that's such a gross comment. Like, And that's how he ended it. That's how he ended the whole big speech on that too. It's like, who are you trying to own with that one? <laughs> yeah and also like half a cow's really not that much bruh but nope. like okay go off i hope the neighbor gives <laughs> him just like not only like a like smaller scale but like the bad parts of the meat and you know 
Okay. There's a lot of gristle in this piece. Uh huh. Okay. Here's your cow ears. Ew. Yeah. Cow neck. It's I like. Oh. I'm like gross. Yeah. Oh. Like what? To just oh yeah, you stuck it to him there, Sully. You stuck it to him. Mm-hmm. Man, oh man, I know Godsmack's gonna be one of the bands that's gonna try to tour as soon as possible. They've been working on a new album. I don't God, care. I hope they do a tour with um, Stained. Can well, that's you... very well. As of now, Stained is still gonna do that tour with Disturbed. I know, and I'm like, why? why? And I don't know I don't... why you're mm. going to that, or at least you're not going early. No, I mean, I've already bought tickets for it, to so be I'm fair, still going to go because I do love Disturbed. To like, be fair, Bad Wolves and Tommy Vex departed ways. That That's, is true. So That makes the opening act much more tolerable. That is true. But yeah, you if you go with your mom, if wh yeah. whoever you go with... Yeah, that's going to be like a good hour and a half of merch and eating and mm -hmm. not doing much. We'll go get a pretzel. <laughs> and a snow cone and stand in line for disturbed merch. I was about to say, we'll just walk around. We'll Boy, take a little jaunt. I guess, yeah. <laughs> that's a long jaunt, though. That's going to be two hours when you think about breaking down the instruments and yeah. set up and then after that to get disturbed ready. So, yeah. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. But besides that, Godsmack will undoubtedly be touring big uh, sec yeah. as soon as they get the all clear for everything. Festivals, concerts, whatever they can do. Oh, gosh. We'll talk about festivals in a little bit also. But yeah, uh, Sully Erna trying to own the libs by leaving them alone. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Sure got us. Oh, you, no. <laughs> you showed us. Darn. I feel bad for the nice people in Florida. And that North Fort Myers, where it gets mm -hmm. like it's starting to get a little bit rural out of Fort Myers and between that and Tampa. And there's not much. Mm. I feel like they don't deserve it, but whatever. <laughs> moving mm -hmm. on, uh, quickly and gladly moving on from Godsmack and Salerna yes. on that one. Uh, but someone else did a podcast, someone who on the opposite spectrum of people I enjoy, Corey Taylor. Had a few th interesting things to say about, to break it down, he did a podcast appearance talking about how there's Gen Z and TikTokers trying to cancel Eminem. Oh, yeah. And it's like, well, guess what? That's been going on since we were kids, you know, mm -hmm. before cancel culture was a thing. Yeah. And Corey Taylor is on the side of Eminem and against this full cancel culture about trying to slaughter someone if you disagree with what they say in a song or in a movie or online or things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing if you're against, let me read the quote so that way they do this. This was in, da -da -da -da, let me see what the, I'll get the right podcast so that way you guys know what I'm uh, quoting. Talking to Matt Pinfield, a former MTV VH1, big name. I was reading about how Gen Z is trying to cancel Eminem because of one of the lines that was in a Rihanna song that he did with her. And I'm just like, is that where we are right now? I mean, at this point, you're talking about the Salem witch trials. You're talking about America in the 20s, where the KKK was a political force. You're talking about complete condemnation without context or any rationalization for an action like that. To me, that is the most dangerous when the mob decides that you are gone. I mean, that is Caesar at the Colosseum, for God's sake. That's what it's dangerous. He continues on. The level of censorship that we are starting to see, and I'm not saying that certain things have not been said that easily offend people. However, the flip side of that is that you cannot even make a joke anymore, even in the cleanest of situations, where people completely turn on you. And there is not a hint of satire. There is no hint of irony. It is just all outrage, and it is all through smartphones. And that is when it's really greedy. That is when it's really dirty. It can't be that way. If we cannot have a conversation, how in the world are we going to communicate? If we cannot understand the difference between metaphor and complete reality, we are in really real trouble. Now, there's two things I want to talk about this. First of all, he also did point out that there is a flip, there is a weak argument, or a weak, there is a strong argument against this saying when kids with phones band together, they can do great things to reunite and make a message powerful. Mm-hmm instantly and make point out things that truly need to be called out you know when someone says something super racist online 
yes, they need to call that out right away, and that's the best way to do it instantly. But Eminem doing a song with Rihanna and him doing a satirical and clearly dumb song 20 years ago on some of his early 2000s stuff, yeah, it's stupid. But are they going to cancel him completely because of that now? Mm. So... And the thing is, too, another argument that someone just made on uh, Twitch, satire still exists. It does, but it's changed. Yeah. It's not um, one of the best examples. When we were growing up, um, when American Idol was huge, Mm -hmm. the big running joke was that Ryan Seacrest was gay. Mm. People used to make fun of him for that all the time. You can't, they're not doing, people don't do that much anymore. When's the last time you heard tons of jokes about someone being gay? In any medium. In any medium. You know, and things have changed. And I think for the better. However, I do agree with what he's saying about how people are jumping on the bandwagon instantly just to cancel someone because they don't like what one person said. Especially Mm -hmm. in a a piece of art, in a song, in a movie, in a TV show. Mm -hmm. You know? So there's a yep. lot of arguments for and against with this one. I'm torn between the two sides. I get that. And say, if someone is truly outlandishly racist, yeah, they need to be put on blast. If they mm-hmm. some say awful stuff. If someone says something stupid that's a dumb joke five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Okay, we'll say 10 years ago when, social, when Twitter was really starting. Yeah. Someone dig, dug up a stupid tweet about how they don't like a TV. TV show or an artist or whatever. And they're putting, like, just saying that, but they change their mind later and they try to look up that stuff. It's like, yeah, you can change your mind in 10 years, first of all. If you yeah. don't like, if you do like a movie now that you didn't before and you were making fun of before. Mm-hmm. Number two, okay. You want to hold someone accountable for that? How? How do you hold someone accountable for that? From a scale of random person X on Twitter all the way up to Eminem and a lyric in the song. You know? Yeah. Well, and it's like, you know, if if you haven't shown any growth or change from who you were 10 years ago, then yeah, maybe it's something to look into. But, I mean... We've we've all said something stupid at some point in our lives, and we've grown past it or what have you. You know, yep. to dig up something like that, it's it's one thing if it's a pattern. Mm-hmm. And so if if what you're saying now is reflective of what you said then, then yeah, it's a pattern, and it's something that needs to be, well, I, I don't even want to say like taken head on, but like discussed. Right. Um, but to just pull something out from years ago and be like, oh, my God. And these are great examples. <laughs> yeah. And these are great examples. OK. When it gets to Chris Brown and Trapped level. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Get, get out of here. Yeah, yep. absolutely. That's out. the perfect example. When everyone banded together about Trapped, you couldn't have done better, guys. Couldn't yep. have done better on that one. With Chris Brown, he's still around, though. He was technically forgiven by Rihanna. Mm -hmm. They worked on a song later. Which I think is crazy, but that's just me. But again, people's opinions change over time. Yep. So, and people's actions change change over time. I mean, Eminem is not the same person he was 20 years ago. He's not. Mm -mm. Not even close. None of us are. No, I agree. So, unless you're, if they do something trapped level, yes, that's where we stop work, stop school, stop things with our families, band together, and make sure this is a, a, like appropriately addressed. Mm-hmm. But you know, you gotta. It has to get to a severe level where everyone is on board. You know, where everyone, it's obvious, even children are going, that's not right. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Moving on. 
Mm, I think that was just worth pointing out. He has good points, and he even called, and they even called out their own counter arguments and stuff too. So it was a good debate. Corey, when I started talk, I when I interviewed Corey, actual interview years ago, he said his next book might be on social media, and now it might be a part of cancel culture too. Adding to mm-hmm. that, because like you know, Corey, like Corey has talked about social media so much. He's barely, he's rarely on it anymore ever again now. So that'd be interesting. I think maybe I'll get mm-hmm. to talk to him sooner or later. I don't know. Moving on. This is, uh, we had some serious discussions here. Well, that was a serious discussion. Sully Erna <laughs> being a lib owning carnivore is not too serious. I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, Rob Zombie's new album is coming out this Friday. I was sent it. I am going to keep most of my thoughts to myself. I'll leave that for the review this time because, again, I was asked for embargo stuff. Or not embargo, but just not to post it till then. I here's the thing. Rob Zombie did a little episode, like a fake interview with his wife, Sherry, talking about why his album titles and song titles are so bonkers crazy. (laughs) I mean, ridiculous. And the reason is because he hates it when albums and song titles sound the exact same, you know, just like our self-titled albums or there's no creativity. There's all these songs have the same name, you know like over time through different genres. And so you think about that, it's like, okay, that's a great idea, but I feel Rob Zombie has gone to the farthest extent from that to be as ridiculous as possible. Now, Mm -hmm. Gretchen, I told her she has not seen these song titles yet. No, I have not. I am going to send Gretchen the track list. And she's going to read them off one by one. Oh, how many are there? 17. Dear Lord. A lot of them are interludes like the last album. A lot of tracks are less than a minute long. Okay. So, sent that to you. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to share my screen. Just a moment. Now, first of all, can you see the top of the screen on that Amazon link that I sent you? Bruh, I'm dying over these titles. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Now, (laughs) I'm going to share. Okay. (laughs) On screen right now, please read the name of Rob Zombie's new album. The Lunar Injection Kool-Aid Eclipse Conspiracy. That is correct. What the F does that mean? Now, to be fair, no one will confuse it for another artist. No, well... So he achieved what he accomplished. Unless they, you know, they're like, oh yeah, wasn't that so-and-so's album? You know, like some other... Very true. Weirdo that wants to do something like this. Very true. Now, keep in mind the uh, album before this one was called the Electric Warlock Acid Witch Satanic Orgy Celebration Dispenser. I'm sorry, it was called what? I said it correctly, madam. <laughs> Clearly, I don't know anything about Rob Zombie. Five years but... ago, his album was called the Electric Warlock Acid Witch Satanic Orgy Celebration Dispenser. That sounds like a blast. <laughs> Actually did have some fun songs on it, to be fair. He played some of them live when we were at Rockville and stuff like that. It is pretty good. But that's besides the point. On that album, that album 2016, it was short. It was barely over half hour. There were so many songs that were like a minute and a half. That's it. This new album, pretty much the same. However, there's 17 Mm -hmm. songs. Yeah, so a smidge longer. So, Gretchen, if you would be a dear, scroll. I'll ask, I'll give you the number. And then you read off the title of the song, okay? And I have both chats open. I'd like to just say that Ivan came in to to help with this as well. Ivan, please give Gretchen a hand (laughs) with this one. Track number one. Expanding the head of Zed. Mm -hmm. Track number two. The triumph of King Freak, a crypt of preservation and superstition. Which is the first single on the album. Oh, yep. okay. That's available now. Track number three. <laughs> the Ballad of Sleazy Rider. To be fair, I kind of like the title of that one. <laughs> that's, not so, that's not so bad. The Sleazy Rider. Exactly. That's not so bad. <laughs> Track number four. Hovering over the dull earth. Okay. I mean, he's not wrong about earth, but... <laughs> Track number five. Shadow of the Cemetery Man. Okay. That's that's creepy. Well, that's he, his whole thing's horror. You got to remember that, too. 
Track number six. Brief static hum, and then the radio blared. <laughs> just sounds like a sentence you're going to read in a book. Mm -hmm. Also, someone just said, come on, Luke, none of these are bad. What are you talking about? I didn't say they were bad. I said they were weird. They're crazy. I said they were bad. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what is this next one? Number seven. 18th century cannibals, excitable Morlocks, and a one-way ticket on the ghost train. Mm -hmm. That sounds like some, like, murder mystery book. <laughs> Track number eight. The Eternal Struggles of the Howlin' Man. Which is the other single that's available right now. Mm. Track number nine. The Much Talked of Metamorphosis. Okay. Track number 10. The Satanic Rites of Blackula. And that is not a black exploitation movie from the 70s. Okay. With Black Dracula. Okay. Number 11. Shower of Stones. Okay. It's like the least, that's that might the be least the offensive that, one. True. It might be an offensive song, though, but we don't know. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of people on YouTube and Twitch reacting appropriately, by the way. So I'm dying at this next one. Number 12. Shake your ass, smoke your grass. <laughs> Rob Zombie was 12 when he wrote that one, apparently. <laughs> apparently I'm 12, too, because it makes me giggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, oh, man. Is Blackula related to Dragula? That is a good comment. Well done. But a lot of people are reacting. What the heck's going on? <laughs> Track number 13. Boom, boom, boom. See, that's not so bad. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Track number 14. What you gonna do with that <laughs> gun, Mama? <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> Mama just killed a man. Oh, wrong, wrong. Wrong also, people. in the early 90s, there was a terrible Sylvester Stallone movie called Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do with that gun mama <laughs> uh, what, what you gonna do with that gun mama uh, oh, God. are you sure these aren't war titles i assure you they're not this is horror based war is alien based alien uh number 15 uh get loose now that's the new uh calm title <laughs> number 16 the Serenity of Witches. And there's a lot of witch talk and witchcraft talk throughout the whole album. Mm -hmm. A, a semi-running theme, not a full theme, though. And number okay. 17. Crow Killer Blues. Okay. So and that's not as weird as other ones. but it's No, also it's not. Like, uh... But you get the point now. When you see the entire track list on screen, I'm sharing my screen right now. <laughs> what word salads can we make that, that sound mm. fun to say? Even if they don't make sense. You know. And that's what we have. Mm -hmm. I have my album review all written out. I ha written out. I have the audio and video recorded. I'll have... I'm hoping to have everything edited up and posted on Patreon tomorrow. Along with the Patreon quarterly giveaway. So, if you're a patron, just let me know with that. Thank you for the raid! Hey, Bees raided us! Thank you so much! Oh, nice. Yeah, B just got done having a Red Hot Chili Peppers party. Hello to everyone that just did the raid with us. We're talking about news of the world of rock, metal, alternative, everything in between. We just talked about Corey Taylor's thoughts on uh, cancel culture, Generation Z. And we also talked about how Sully Erna wanted to move to Florida to get away from the libs. I am <laughs> not making that up. Gretchen, uh, my dear, just read all the title tracks of... <laughs> All the new Rob Zombie songs. Thank you again, Bees. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. Um, yeah, Rob Zombie. He is calculated chaos. He is a businessman, whether you like him or not. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I adore Rob Zombie as a live performer. Always have. I can't show you right now because it's on a fixed DSLR, but I have a picture of Rob Zombie hanging up in my home because he's a great. He's so fun live. But man, oh man. Um, he's gone bonkers, even more so than the 2016 album with some of these songs and album titles. Again, or the album title and the song titles. Again, a lot of these songs on the 17 track, track album are less than a minute. No. Yeah. This is not a long album, even though it looks like it. It's not a long album. <sighs> so, 
Expect more insanity this Friday. Man, oh man. I, I don't even know what else to say about it, guys. Dang. Some of this say, stuff. There's some, I think there's you, some creative titles. Okay, uh, your, that. your favorite was number 12. My favorite was number uh, my favorite was number 14. What are you going to do with that gun, mama? Yeah, 12 was definitely my favorite. Mm, <laughs> Shake mm, your mm. ass, smoke your grass. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Love it. The two new songs that are available right now also, um, The Triumph of King Freak and The Eternal Struggles Are Howling Man. Again, they're on YouTube right now. I talk about those on the album review. And someone said 28 minutes is the runtime. I believe it. It's probably, it might be, I, I figured it was going to be like right on par, half hour. But if is it's 28 it? minutes, I totally believe because the last album was only 31 minutes, barely. But this is 17 songs and I know you said a lot of it's like interlude stuff, but... yes. Really? A lot, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's just what he wants. Like, boom, boom, boom. Just like the song title, Short Tracks. That's a motto for him now. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay, I see a lot of people just putting in word salads and making their own songs. The Cannibal Horcrux of the Hillbilly, Hillbilly Grandparents. Oh. Wooly Mammoth Revenge Hoot Nanny. <laughs> Annie. The Jumping Scarecrow Lap Dance Museum. Okay. Now, I know these are funny. I think y'all are coming up with Black Mirror episode titles, too. Uh, I think you guys are getting a little wound up. <laughs> I think you guys need to calm it down a bit. I know it's funny to put random words together and call it a Rob Zombie song. I probably would do the same if I wasn't being trying to be Mr. Professional. The tampon cocktail of the epileptic vampire. You need to get out of here. <laughs> that is Gretchen you, that... need to, Gretchen, you need to support me on this. You need to get out of here. That is amazing. Gretchen. Oh, my God. Shadow of the Wax Museum Cemetery Psycho. Ugh. Oh, my God. I don't even know what to say. This whole show is just... I had a nice raid from bees, and now this is what it's evolved into. Ugh. This got stuck on the tampon cocktail. Disgusting. <laughs> Someone's grounded. A lot of you are grounded. Ugh. Oh God. Moving on. Shadow. And people. People are just given given Rob Zombie ideas for his next album. That's all it is. <gasps> the Robot Chainsaw Detective Agency. <laughs> okay. Oh. That's terrifying. Okay. The Balloon House flying to the into the grave. Okay. You know what? You guys are just all over the place now. Phew. Uh, let's go back. Uh, <laughs> So, moving on. I'm not, I can't read all the names all day. Last two. Redemption of Werewolf Vampire Smoothies. Oh. And the Ostensible Deterioration of the Satanic Caves of Second Mordor. <laughs> man, oh man. Don't need to bring Lord of the Rings into this. Uh-uh-uh. Thank you for all the new follows, by the way. Uh. So, moving on. And I'll have to share my screen again with this, but there's a little bit of a story behind this too. Most of you have been following my channel on YouTube for years may know I am a massive, enormous The Mars Volta fan. Big time. Gretchen's not familiar with The Mars Volta probably mm -hmm. at all, and that's fine. Well, I can explain a little other, bit. Other than the fact that I know you really like them. Exactly. So the Mars Volta ended up everything around 2011. 20, I think their formal ending was 2013 or so. Last album came out in 2012, and from 2003 to 2012, they are, were a prog rock insanity phenomenon, combining electronica, jazz, with rock, making full, long progressive albums for everyone who's not aware. And Mars Volta was my second all-time favorite video when I talked about Francis the Mute, a 90-minute album, which is as crazy as it sounds, but it's so good. Anyway... Okay. Well, um, to sum up some of these, Mars Volta has been put on the shelf for a long time, broken up, and at the drive-in reformed, it's the same singer and guitarist, Cedric and Omar. At the drive-in was around, had a little comeback a few years ago. They've been also stopped for now, too. The thing is, the Mars Volta's catalog owned by Universal, they've held a tight lock on their product, on their music. To the point where they weren't letting Cedric and Omar do what they wanted with it. And Universal started releasing their music on vinyl years ago. And it was just a very flat recording. 
just in very base, basic um, vinyl wraps, you know, and the cardboard and things like that. Nothing special. Oh, yeah, you want the album on uh, vinyl? Here you go. If you ever know the Mars Volta, that is not them. They have detailed, creative, re- insane artwork for everything they do. Full artistry on every tour poster, every t-shirt, every, like, all the booklets for albums and things like that. So, we found out last week the Mars Volta have signed with Clouds Hill, new label, and new production company, I should say. I don't know know if I want to call it a new label. And they are going to release a massive box set. Their entire discography, along with pre-recorded demos before their first album, their original EP, two unreleased songs, and an entire photo booklet the size of a vinyl with unreleased photos and stuff for their heyday. This is a big deal for a lot of collectors because if you're a vinyl collector out there, the Mars Volta's t- t- first two albums, Delouse in the Comatorium and Francis the Mute, both, with, both went gold, uh, gold certified back in the day. They're upwards of $200, $300 a piece for used copies. That's insane. Mm-hmm for one vinyl. So, pairing with Clouds Hill, and I'll share my screen right now. I don't know if Gretchen can see or not. You may have to look on one of the streams if you are. I have both up. Okay, gotcha. So, the Mars Volta releasing La Realidad de los Suenos, meaning the reality of dreams. 18 vinyls in a magnificent box set that's actually like a piece you can put on your table or your mantle or whatever and show off. And I'll go through some of the pictures right now. And there's more to this also. If you can see the pictures, da 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 This is the actual box set. It's pretty bonkers looking. And it's amazing. You see artwork from different albums all put together on the front. Mm. It's an actual box that you take off. And you can find all the, vol- all the vinyl in there. Sorry if I said vinyls before. I know it's vinyl. It's a singular plural. And then they have all the artwork. It's all great. I mean, they have all the demos, the original unfinished recordings, lots of cool stuff for the diehard fans, things like that. So they released that. They made the announcement. It sold out almost instantly for all the available copies. They had a limit of 5,000 total being made throughout the world. And they held some back for a second sale and to have some be able to be able pre-ordered through actual vinyl stores. Here's the issue. They sold thousands of them already in less than 24 hours. Like, Clouds Hill has to figure out how to sell these, like, the ones that they held for reserve. They're going to figure out when they're going to start selling the rest of those again. They did not realize how fast this massive box set was going to sell. They're already popping up on eBay for ridiculous amounts, like Mm -hmm. over $1,000. And I just want, let me do a little quick math for you. Da-da-da-da. See, part of this was because Cedric and Omar wanted to sell it their way and make money off their music and have a big final piece, a closing chapter for the Mars Volta. You know? Something cool to actually brag about and have. So everything's nice. It's the musical equivalent of the PS5. That is correct. So every, like a nice closing piece, their artwork designed their way. All, everything presented the way they want it to be. And they said, screw it, we'll do it ourselves. Screw you, Universal. And they're still in fights with Universal as it is. So, quick math. $479 times, they haven't sold them out all yet, but they sold about well over half. So we'll say 3000 In one day, they made over almost $1.5 million. $1.4 million. Oh my God. That's not including tax. They had a pretty good day. Yeah, no joke. See, in my mind, I'm going, hey, Cedric and Omar, maybe that's a clue that we want you to come back. Yeah, no joke. (laughs) But, again, they will be returning uh, for the remainder that they're all coming uh, for the remainder to be sold. And, like, all the stuff with Universal, they're trying to desperately get away from them. Man, oh, man, that's huge, though. I did not order one. I, can't, I couldn't swing the price, 
Bummer that I can't get Francis the Mutant D-Louse on vinyl right now. Just how it is, but that's okay. Hmm. I know, I just hope the people that get it really are the diehard fans, because I know there's still so many out there. And these vinyls are hard to come by. Like, you have to go on Discogs and get the used copies that are a little bit beat up for like over $150, $200. Just for like used, you know? So... Mm. It looks like an amazing thing. A lot of people on YouTube are saying it looks great, looks pleasing. Again, this is like a piece you can actually set on your mantle or your top of bookshelf or something like that. And it looks right. good. It looks like something different. So I think that's kind of awesome. 18 vinyl total. Again, there's like three or four vinyl per album. You got to remember, too, for some of the albums because the songs and everything are so long. They're the masters of long tracks. So I just thought that was worth pointing out. I thought it was pretty cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving on, even though I could talk about Mars Volta all day, I would bore a lot of you. One unfortunate thing that happened over this past week, um, the our favorite singer from over, uh, not favorite, but still, our singer of Entombed, Lars Goran Petra, passed away. I had his picture just up there for a brief second. He died of cancer at age 49. Mm-mm. And it had to do with throat cancer. I think it said bile duct cancer, to be specific. That is a gruesome way to go. And a lot of love has been supporting and pouring out for him. Um, people from Megadeth, Exodus, all the heavy, heavy metal bands, you know, things like that. Uh, Lars and Entombed will, like, hit a lot of people. So it is worth pointing out that he died, especially at only at 49, you know. So that's an unfortunate, another unfortunate loss. Like, it feels like we're losing a lot of metal musicians. Power Trip, Entombed, you know. So it's cancer. That's unfortunately part of life for all of us. So, mm. yeah, I did want to point that out while we were doing this. Right. Moving on as we go on, I did want to talk about the Billboard Mainstream Top 3 because there has been some change up. So for those of you who are unaware, we talk about the Billboard Mainstream Rock Songs of the Week. And we go through the top three if there's changes. Coming at number three, being knocked down from number one, is Mammoth, Wolfgang Van Halen with Distance. He had a decent little run at number one. Good for him. Number two is Self Destructor from Chevelle, who just had their album, Neurotius, Nothing Is Real and This Is a Simulation, come out this past Friday. Very solid album reviews on the main channel. And number one, The Ending by Papa Roach. Song that came out well over a year and a half ago. And this is my point again about Billboard, mainstream rock, FM channels. They will play these bands and any song they can ad nauseum. Because it's those bands. Right. Papa Roach is definitely one of those bands. It doesn't even have to be a song people are requesting. Doesn't matter. Number one, the ending by Papa Roach. That's another number one track. They have been working on their new album as well. Jacoby Shaddix is doing a lot of uh, work with like collaborations again. And I'll be nice whenever Jacoby Shaddix does collaborations with other artists. He knocks it out of the park usually. He does a really good job. But his last few albums, especially this previous one, terrible. So, radio cannot get it. Yeah, someone just said it on YouTube. Radio cannot get enough of the same stale stuff. That is absolutely correct. Mainstream rock. Even Sirius XM, though, is playing this song quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So... Gretchen and I are both big fans, supporters and fans of Sirius XM. But yeah, even we've both, I, I don't know if I, you said you did, yes. Yeah, this song's getting a lot of airplay, and I cannot for the, re, for the life of me figure out why. Especially for a song that's this old now. Right. If it was only six months ago when the album came out, I'd get it. But man, this is, this has to be going on two years now. That's like Godsmack level. <laughs> when they were playing all the songs from that God's Back When Legends Rise, which came out in 2018. Ugh. So we're going to have more of that, too. We're getting all this new music from our favorite artists. We're getting new music from a lot of our artists that aren't our favorites, either. Just be ready for that, though. So, just something I thought that was interesting. So, get ready for that. Maybe it'll be another change next week, though. One other thing we wanted to talk about that I... Let Gretchen know when I saw it, and I think this is a great thing, a smart decision. We talked about uh, music festivals in the United States that are coming back, hopefully after pandemic and everything they're trying to change up. DWP was scheduled for four of them, and they said incarceration was going to be the closest one scheduled for July. That's tugging your collar close. Well, yeah. they worked with Ohio, listened to a lot of people. 
I think they did a very smart thing and rescheduled for September, just two months after. And so instead of July, it'll be September 10th through 12th in Ohio at the same prison where they filmed Shawshank Redemption. This has been going on for a few years now. They usually, people say they usually do a pretty good job with incarceration, and we'll find out the actual lineup in April. Gretchen and I will break that down, as we always do with festival lineups, because it's fun for us, and we like reading them off to you, too. Oh, so, yeah. I do think that's a great idea. I know it's probably, if Gretchen said, it's booked for the same time weekend as another festival in the country that's more independently owned. Yeah, the Blue Ridge Rock yeah. Fest here in Virginia. Which is a bummer, but I at least understand because they already have Louder Than Life in September and weekends aren't numerous. Mm -hmm. They have to do it over a weekend, so it's going to have to be one time or another. So, But that'll be in Ohio, so we will talk about that when that time comes. Uh, someone just asked on YouTube, isn't Jacoby getting sick of being on Billboard already? Probably not. <laughs> nope. Probably not. He's probably pretty happy with that. Again, that's another band. You better believe Papa Roach is itching to get back on the road. That is one thing I will say. They are Gosh, great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Gretchen could at least attest to this too, even though I'm not crazy about Papa Roach and never have been. They are great to their fans. They're like a prime example of how to be good to your fans. And two, Jacoby gives everything he can for his live shows. Whether yes. you like him or not, he gives 100%. You never hear about Jacoby Shaddix phoning it in. So, I that's... Yeah. Two honest, sincere, positive things I can say about Papa Roach and Jacoby Shaddix. So I stand by that, too. Gretchen has experience with Papa Roach, too. <laughs> yeah, see, my experience is... the It's mixed. Because, like, the first time, or that first one, was really negative. A dude started a fight with, like, five women and, like, started throwing punches at them. Papa so, Roach like, has a crowd that has people <laughs> like that, unfortunately. That, like, that was not cool. And then a few months later, um, I guess it was technically the same tour, because it was with Shinedown again. Right. But, like, the first time was in February when I saw them, and then the second time, August. Um, so I guess it was, like, a continuation. But, like, that experience was way better. So I don't know if it was yeah. like a venue thing or just like a place it could have like been where a it took place thing. It could have been a where it took place thing. Could have, like I put that as the same thing with venue because I've seen that before too. Yeah. I've seen them so many times at festivals. It's insane. I've seen them yeah. open for Shinedown on like um, Carnival of Madness tour. So yeah, I mean, Pop Roach is another band that loves to live on the road. Yeah. That's where they, they shine. So that's why I'm saying as soon as that tour, as soon as um, – mandates and COVID security and like venues can open up. Papa Roach is on the road. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Someone just said, I saw him at Sonic Temple. We did. Yeah. We were there too. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They're really, they really put on a show. They do. Uh, you do and again, I, and you don't... I guess you can say that, you know, any band is going to have a fan base that, you know, has some questionable. True. Fans oh yeah. It. Oh yeah. So for sure. Uh, but yeah, so that's just something with that with Papa Roach too. And yeah. I don't know if they're going to redo that Five Figure Death Bunch Papa Roach tour. That was the oh. one that got can COVID canceled. I, I forgot about that. Because wasn't hope... Ice Nine Kills? Yes, and that? I hope they don't because that will attract the nasty crowd. It just I was I was I was like planning to drive to Maryland because that was the closest. One I hope for you me had like a group of people to go with and a bodyguard. <laughs> Actually, I think I was planning to go by myself that one time. Oh, uh, no. Kind of no. glad I didn't now. Yeah. But, I mean, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to go anyway. Uh, but. Uh, so, Yee. I don't know if that tour is going to happen or not. We'll find out, especially with all the changes in Five Figure Death Punch. So, yes. we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> and all their stances on masks and um, social rights and many other things that Gretchen probably doesn't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh so that being said, I think we're getting ready to wind down. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. A couple things I wanted to talk about that we're going to have on the YouTube channel and on Twitch. First, number one, on Twitch, we'll be doing Riffage again this month. I will be doing it with John from ARTV next week on the 18th. So you're going to have two hours of us making fun of music videos, watching those just like I did with Crash. If this goes well, I might be able to test and see if I can get more than one person on the line at the same time. My computer can handle it, and this is gonna test if my internet connection can handle it. So let's just say this, this will be a great test if John and I can do it well, then we'll see if we can push the boundaries next time. So please tune in for that. We'll do Riffage on March 18th. 
And then we're still aiming for Rock Coliseum, a special Rock Coliseum with a theme at the end of this month. I'll make that announcement later, but that'll be on the main YouTube channel. So if you're not already, please subscribe to Rocked on YouTube. Helps me out a ton. Big time. I mean, that's what I'm working for right now. You can expect that album review for Rob Zombie's new album, The Lunar Injection Kool-Aid Eclipse Conspiracy. And I have a special video coming out next week. Five American bands that do better overseas. It'll be an interesting one for sure. And I have some other surprises at the end of this month. Gretchen just posted on her channel an entire piercing guide for your Daith Doth piercing, however you want to pronounce oh, it. Ah, oh, thanks for pronouncing it both ways. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so if you're into body mods or you want to know about the piercing, that's a full piercing guide. You can check out on her channel, at Go Gretchen, G-E-A-U-X Gretchen on YouTube. Someone just said <laughs> on YouTube, replace Five Figure Death Punch with Limp Biscuit. I don't know how to break this to you, but that would not... Um, bring in a nicer, <laughs> friendlier crowd. I was about to say, I'm not sure which one's worse. So uh, let's I, be honest. I, whether you like Limp Bizkit or not, guys, you're not getting the the a clean, the cleanest, nicest, friendliest crowd if no. you bring in Limp Bizkit at this point to replace Five Finger Death Punch. So yeah, no. I'll just leave it at that. And other than that, I think that's really about it before we start um, breaking things down. Oh, and someone's saying about Kid Rock. Yeah, Kid Rock's going to have his big one come out this year. Ugh. I'll get there when I get there. Ugh. Gretchen, is there anything you would like to end with? Uh, get your vaccine if you're able to, because the CDC just said that uh, fully vaccinated people can gather indoors sure without can. masks. That's right. So now we have it actually word, regardless of the vaccine too, no matter which brand you get, I got Pfizer, yeah. Gretchen got Moderna. So it doesn't matter. Just get the vaccine if you're able to. You can get the Johnson & Johnson one, and that's only one. It's only one shot. Two? Yep. So check that out if you can, guys. Yeah. Thank you again. Please hit us up for New Music Night on Sunday. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll have all the new music that dropped this week playing for that night. It's fun. You get to interact with us. You vote on every song. Give it the thumbs up or thumbs down. I think that should be about it. So as we fade away, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're on Twitch right now, I'll send a raid. And if you're on YouTube, thank you for watching. We will see you guys next week, and we'll see you on Sunday night. Gretchen, tell everyone goodbye. Goodbye. And also, Gretchen, pet Ivan for us if he's still there. Oh, no, he, he left. Oh, that's a bummer. I was, he said bye. I was kind of hoping he was still there. That's, he said bye. That's sad. <laughs> that's just sad. Thanks, everyone. Stick around if you're on Twitch. I'll send a raid. Bye.